And I think that um, the other resource that I want to dive into now that you've kind of pivoted us into that direction is a, a link that I can share with you. Um, and you can either put it in the description of this podcast or both of us can tweet it out or whatever. But uh, I put this up on my Twitter when I read it, and it's from Ryan Holiday's website. And he wrote a blog post called, Will You Choose a Live Time or Dead Time? And the basic theory of this blog post is the idea of, I'm going to try to find a um, excerpt that I can read um, here. He just like, he's posting all the books that he's read uh, during this time, how when he finally took some time to himself, he was able to get his ego of the, is the enemy book out. Um, let's see. He says, life is constantly asking us, is this going to be a live time or dead time? A long commute. Are we going to zone out or listen to an audiobook? A delayed flight. Are we going to get in a couple of miles by walking around the terminal or shove a Cinnabon into our face? A tour of duty or a contract we have to earn it out. Is this tying us down or freeing us up? That's our call. And then he tells the story of Malcolm Little being in 10 years of prison serving a sentence where he, instead of wasting his time away behind bars, he copied the dictionary word for word and read books furiously to the point where he wore out his eyes and he had to wear glasses. And that's just kind of like those inspiring stories are what I I, I want people to, you know, whether it's chefs who would constantly uh, bemoan the fact that they didn't have enough time to spend with their family. Like, I hope that those chefs are getting that time right now. Or Mm -hmm. people who constantly said, oh, I never have enough time to be creative. Like, I hope you're writing a menu every single day or at least getting a dish idea out of your head every single day. Or the people who said, well, well, you know, like sharpening knives isn't really for me. And I, you know, always take my knives in to get it, get them sharpened by someone else. Like I'm trying to like furiously pump out resources to make it uh, enjoyable or easy to learn these, these types of skills. And I think that people fall nine times out of 10 into one of these two camps where you look at this as dead time. Like this sucks. Uh, I have to collect unemployment. Um, I'm and 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 I'm not dismissing the struggles that people are going through right now but I think that the mindset that you take to either choose this as like you said I've never tried pickling before or I don't know how to work with sourdough starter and what can I do with sourdough starter besides making a loaf of bread like uh there's tons of cool recipes from um like sourdough crackers to people make pancakes out of them to like really delicious like dark chocolate brown butter cookies made from sourdough starter that just have this incredibly different flavor uh like i think that a lot of people should be thinking through how they can use this as a live time rather than dead time i don't know have you seen like does that does that resonate with you in any capacity or or do you have anything to say on on that oh yeah i mean i'm definitely a huge ryan holiday fan uh ego is the enemy is like a book that i'll say changed my life but um no, I saw that and I totally agree with you. I mean, this time has been, you know, this ability to have time for the next month, at least for me, has been great. I mean, something not food related that I'm really interested in is learning guitar. And I've been wow. you know, struggling to learn guitar for the last seven months and I'm dedicating an hour each day to learning it. And like today, just sitting down for an hour and playing, like I was able to get things I wasn't able to get before. I was able to, you know, hit some chords that I wasn't really able to do. And that was due to, being fresh and being like awake and just being able to kind of, you know, have all of my energy put into one task. And I think that's like a big thing is not being spent and trying to do something new. I think having that energy to focus on new things is going to be really beneficial. And so on that same point, I have a friend of mine who's been constantly messaging me and he's posting on Instagram a lot. He was supposed to start a job a week before uh, or a week after in, in that same time frame where basically the entire state of Washington got locked down and that the restaurant is, is not open as a lot of other uh, places are uh, right now. And he has been messaging me saying that he's been cooking four to six hours a day and he's a wine director. <laughs> and he just like, he completely is trying to use this time to, he's making food, f- like I said, four to six hours a day And he left Seattle. He's back home uh, with his parents. And he's saving money on rent. He's learning things 
like slamming through cookbooks every single day. And he's taking those meals and dropping them off uh, to people around his parents' house who, you know, are either, you know, just, just as cooped up or like what I'm trying to say is he's trying to be productive with this time and really indulge himself in this activity that he loves. He just never had the time for it, or at least to explore some of these dishes more in depth uh, yeah. when he was, you know, working 60 hours a week at a restaurant. And so I, I, I just, if, if anybody is, and the beauty of all of this is the natural inkling for people who want to continue and to improve. I know that I was this type of person early on in my career is to like, well, it has to be food related. It has to be in relation to cooking. It has to be in relation into like food writing, or I have to like expand my network. I have to go, go, go because you're so used to pouring your heart into this restaurant job for so many hours of your week. But I think that if you could, and using your example of like getting into another hobby, like playing guitar, prevent yourself from falling into this funk that would effectively really give you a negative mindset when you do go back to work, that is arguably just as valuable. And that's me making the case for, you know, maybe give yourself permission to pick up a drum set off of Offer Up or Craigslist and just learn something new or take up coding or play a video game or, you know, like Anna and I are so excited to uh, plant, like plant seeds for our garden this weekend. Like there's so many things that we're doing to like continue to use that alive time that I think people would get a lot of value from if they would change their mindset during this time of, yes, you cannot do the thing that you dedicated your life towards during this chapter of your life. And that sucks. But there's so many other opportunities for, for you available out there. I, there's another thing that I can maybe send you. It's a uh, author that I follow. His name is Ramit Sethi. And he um, has a book called I Will Teach You to Be Rich. And it's a horrible title, but it's basically like the basics of personal finance. And he's been going on Instagram Live every single day, sharing just practical knowledge about working remotely, managing your personal finances during this time, uh, how to potentially negotiate a higher salary, uh, position yourself well in the job market. He puts out a lot of valuable content. But the thing that I that stuck with me that I want to share here is he spoke, He got a question about how has your daily routine changed during this time? And he has a like seven-figure-a-year company. He has a ton of employees. He manages a lot. And he was super transparent in saying, you know, my, my routine has fallen kind of off the rails. Like I wake up an hour later. Uh, my wife and I are going to bed a little bit uh, a little bit later as well. Um, I have only been going to the gym like three days a week when I've normally been going like five or six. Uh, I'm not really eating as well as I should. Uh, but, you know, I'm kind of taking this time to just kind of like acknowledge that the world is not in a normal state. So it's I'm giving myself permission to also not operate normally during this time. Yeah. And I think it was really powerful for people to, you know, because it's really easy for to to start to feel guilty of like, oh, well, I'm not operating at the full cylinders that I usually am during this time. And I don't know why that is. And then you start having all this negative self-talk that gets you in a really bad place. And then you start watching the news and then you go on Twitter and it's all negative, 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 and you're negative with yourself. And so that can be just such a dark cloud over yourself all day. So hearing him you know, admit to that was just like a big exhalation. And, you know, like, yes, maybe you can't go to the gym five days a week, or maybe you're not waking up as early as you wanted, or maybe you're ordering pizza a little more than you wanted to. But like, how can you substitute that with other things that are still positive for yourself? So for, for me, that looks like instead of going to the gym, because my gym is closed, I'm taking hour long walks every day. And I had a bunch of um, Audible credits in my account. So I downloaded like 12 audiobooks. And I'm making it a point to every single day call one uh, uh, of both of my parents. So if I call my dad, I called my dad today, I will be calling my mom tomorrow. And all of this happens. Uh, it's usually like, you know, 20 to 30 minutes talking with my parents. And then it's like 30 minutes of listening to an audiobook. Mm -hmm. And that's like, and I'm getting my vitamin D and I'm moving my legs and like Seattle has quite a bit of hills. So I'm like walking up these hills. So my heart gets pumping a little bit. And those are all changes to your routine that, yes, you could say, well, it's not quite like I'm not quite improving my numbers on my deadlift, 
like I thought, or like my squat is probably going to be really shitty when I go back into the gym, <laughs> but I'm not laying in bed <laughs> and eating my, you know, second bowl of cereal kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? So that's yeah. kind of like what I want people to focus on is, is giving themselves a permission of, yes, your routine is probably going to get an adjustment during this time. And that's okay because these are weird fucking times. So I guess like those are the, those are kind of the, the few things that are, that are top of mind for me right now. Yeah. Um, I think things that I, I'm focusing on. So obviously, like I said, guitar, big thing. Um, I've, I love instruments. I've played them all, my whole life, but I tend to, when I tend to get busy with something else, kind of forget about them. So really trying to dedicate myself to the guitar uh, for during this time. Uh, reading obviously is a big, big one. I'm reading um, MFK Fisher right now. Love uh, it. I've never read any of her work. And so I just picked up one of her books today and I started reading that. Um, writing, uh, as you know, I am working on a book or a journal. I'm not sure what it is, but um, I'm about to hit page 100 on a Word document. Hell so yeah. That's, that's great. Yeah. So more time with that. And um, I'm going to be doing pickling, uh, sourdough starter, stuff like that. Uh, but the biggest thing I think is really focusing on the social media stuff. Um, if Like today, like just this new time to think and kind of, kind of like reach more of how I can be a community. So I'll give you an example today. I was looking at like all my numbers, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and obviously Instagram with line click thoughts is the biggest platform I'm on uh, with, uh, you know, almost 8,500 followers, um, constant, uh, just people like, you know, reaching out and stuff. And Facebook is probably the sec- is, is the second biggest with a thousand members or a thousand people who like it or follow it. And then Twitter obviously being the smallest. So as you saw today, a lot of Twitter activity, but on Facebook, I felt, you know, Facebook, you know, being such a, um, such a place where so many, so much is shared and there's so much more like long form written content. Like why, why are we not like bigger on uh, Facebook? And so today I started a group, which obviously anyone can join. Um, it's called, which I called the line cook nation, which as you know, is what I call the listeners of the podcast. And it just made like, it made so much sense when I thought about it, like, cause on my content page, it said, why don't you start a group? And I was like, why don't I start a group that's called line cook nation? It's something that I've had since day one, you know, this idea of, cooks coming together. And, you know, I just couldn't believe that I'd never made a Facebook group called the line cook nation. And so that is now something that has been created on Facebook, but it took all this like t- extra time to just think and kind of reflect and take a step back to think of something that could potentially be really big. So that, yeah. I guess that's just an example of, you know, what a fresh, what fresh time can give you in terms of it's, your perspective. Yeah. It's a, it's the classic shower idea, right? Like you finally take a step away from what you're doing and give your mind space to breathe. I think there's going to be a lot of that for a lot of people during this time. And it's not all going to be good, Ray, right? Like there's a lot, there's going to be a lot of people who finally get off the treadmill or the hamster wheel of working 70 hours a week. And they're going to take this time and say, wow, like there's so much more that I could be doing, or it's going to be the opposite, you know, like I'm, um, you know, talking to people who, uh, are messaging me and they're saying, Hey man, like my job from my nine to five is like really completely draining me. And now that I have time at home to cook for my family every single day, I'm realizing that this might be something that I want to get, get into like for real. And so I think things are going to go like people are going to shift both ways. There's going to be a big influx of people into the food industry. There's going to be a lot of people who are like, this is not for me anymore and I don't want to do this. And we're going to see how that plays out. But yeah, I'm happy to hear that you're continuing to make progress in all these areas because, uh, yeah, I think that that's, that's what, uh, you know, keeps us, keeps us focused on, interacting with each other is that we're both progress focused. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you kind of touched on something that I think I would like to get into next is, you know, what have you heard amongst cooks in terms of wanting to stay in the industry or, you know, switching roles? I'll mm. share with myself that I've been, I've heard mixed. I've heard a lot of cooks, you know, obviously saying they're sad to be out of work and they're going to miss it a ton. Um, but I've also heard a lot of people saying they want to get different degrees that they kind of want to get out of the industry or, that a normal kitchen job just and really just really isn't appealing to them anymore, and I'm not sure if that's going to change over time due to the mm-hmm. reactions we're seeing now. But I do see a lot of cooks kind of wanting to exit or kind of wanting to get a salaried position, or at least just want, not wanting to be where they were before this happened because of where they are now in terms of financial status and you know kind of really struggling. What are your what have you heard in terms of the kind of idea of being a cook right now? 
sure. I think that in the same way that 